Welcome to episode four of the Finance Fusion podcast. Today we have Lewis Yunus, the founder of ITF Group, discussing the challenges in business, scaling a business, acquiring assets, and what to look out for. How are you, Lewis? Fantastic, Elias. How are you? Thanks for coming on, mate. God bless you. Thank you for having me. We've we've obviously known each other for a long time. We have seven or eight years. Been a good customer of ours and yep. became a good friend. Why don't we start by sort of giving an introduction on ITF Group? You know how it started where it's at now and that sort of that transition is exactly what ITF group covers. Yep. So we, I know you have different types of businesses within the group. Maybe give us a breakdown on what chains in that business. What, what are the things in that business that you're currently doing? Easy. So, um, ITF originally started as, uh, installed temporary fencing and hoarding. Um, sorry, no, we'll go back a step. It started with my dad's business, which mm. was install solutions. Um, so when I was 18, 19, I lost my license. Uh, I was working at Dick Smith Powerhouse at the time. My dad said, come along, I'll give you a hand, come work for me. Mm. So I went and worked with him being a labourer in a shop fitting business. Mm-hmm. And um, dad was paying these hoarding uh, companies large amounts of money to install these hoardings in sh- shopping centres. Mm-hmm. And um, one day we're in Melbourne Central, we're doing a job there for a pharmacy. And he said, mate, you know, it'd be great to get into these hoardings. I said, yeah, cool. And it was about 2 a.m., 3 a.m. the next day. I was with a mate of mine, Tim. Uh, he was a carpenter. Mm. I said, hey, Tim, um, dad reckons we, we should start a hoarding company. He goes, what's hoarding? I said, mate, it's just, you know, <laughs> this, uh, you know, this plywood in the middle of the shop. Yeah. You know, these boards. I don't know. I don't know much about it, but it's good money. <laughs> yeah. He goes, all right, mate. He goes, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you... <laughs> You're the businessman, yeah. I'm the chippy, yeah, yeah. whatever, let's do it. Let's do it. I said, right, no problem. So I was studying business management at, at, at the time at, uh, at uni hmm. and, um, mate, just, it just sort of kicked off from there. Uh, a mate of mine got us a job at a NAB bank up hmm. at Foster, did that job, made some money, then after that we couldn't land a job. Hmm. That was it. Hmm. A couple of months went past. He said, Lewis, what's, <laughs> what's the plan here? Hmm. I said, mate, I don't know. I'm not sure. So... Um, Dad at the time was pushing me, you know, construction, construction, development. That's where the money is. And I said, Dad, respectfully, every Lebo is in construction. Mm. You know, every Lebo is a plumber, a sparky, a builder. I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm, I'm different. He said, mate, suit yourself. Mm. Then I think a few a few months went past. I was in the shower one day and I thought, shit, no Lebos are doing temporary fencing. Um, so I came out of the shower, rang Tim. Tim, mate, what, what? temporary fencing. He goes, mate, another great idea, but. We're going to win work because the last one we've won one job. It's been months. <laughs> I said, I don't know. So, um, yeah, the idea came from the shower. I think we went to a internet cafe back then, looked up on the, uh, the <laughs> up on the trading post, looked at some panels, okay, whatever. Went to boot camp the next day, a heap of builders in the, in, in the class and, you know, I'm doing temporary fencing, I'm doing temporary fencing. Next day we landed a job. Had you even had stock at that point? No. Had nothing. You just said, I'm doing temporary you fencing. Knew nothing about temporary fencing. <laughs> you knew nothing. Um, well, so long story short, we won a 160 meter job down at, that, down at uh, Meadowbank. I said, mate, when do you want it? He said, oh, by Friday. I go, mate, it's Wednesday. He goes, yeah. I said, all, right, all good. We'll sort it out. No problem. <laughs> Tim, we need a hundred and something meters. He goes, mate, we, I don't know. I said, mate, back to the internet cafe. So I went to the internet cafe, um, found some panels down in Wollongong, cruised down there. Bought some panels. Um, they were cheap. There was a good deal. Bought them. We went to get the blocks, and the blocks had no concrete in them. And he's like, "Oh no! Like you, you buy the shells, you concrete them yourself." I said, "Mate, we got to install them Friday. It's Wednesday. Like, how, yeah, how's yeah, this gonna yeah. happen?" <laughs> so then we found another company in Windsor that sold some blocks. So we bought the panels from Wollongong. Bought the blocks from Windsor. Went went out and done this job. I think we spent about six grand on 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 this on this stock. And you had never ever we, installed a temporary fence. I said, to, I remember Tim. I said, Tim, what's the plan? He goes, "You drive the truck around slowly." I'll stay on the back of the truck and I'll throw the blocks off. And then we'll come back around, put the panels in. And I said, okay. So, you know, he was the fit one. <laughs> I was the short, stubby one. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm driving the truck. He, he's on the back and he's, he's throwing them off. And um, I think it cost us about six grand to buy the stock. Yeah. Then I said to my mate, uh, Ray, Ray the builder, gave me my first job. I said, Ray, what do I charge? He goes, mate, just ring around and get some pricing and whatever sphere I'll pay her. Anyway, I think it was like eighteen hundred bucks. We charged him eighteen hundred, and Tim and said, "Mate, we spent six grand on stock. We took yeah. the day off work. We did wow. this, this, this is, and we're only getting back eight hundred bucks. And the guy's going to keep the stock for six nine months." I said, well, "I guess so." He goes, "What deal is this, mate? <laughs> yeah. What deal?" Like, and I was like so um, 
It was what a tough. learning curve. It was a yeah. massive learning curve. Yeah. And um, then, then we realised that we bought 2.1 metre panels, which then were a standard panels 2.4, 2.5. Mm. So you need more blocks and clamps to make up the meterage. So mm. we spent more money than we should have. And, you know, you learn. Yeah, mate. It sort of went from there. Um, we sort of – we bought some stuff. We couldn't keep up. Um, the, word, the word was getting around that, you know, Tim and I were doing mm. – doing fencing and hoardings and um, in the end we couldn't afford to keep buying stock mm. so we would sub hire off our competitors um, that sort of worked for two three months and then they got the shits with us and they said you know you're you're beating us with our own stock I said what's the problem I thought, oh you know that's unethical I said how's it unethical you're still getting a piece of the pie yeah you you know? it so money. it's up to you yeah, like, yeah. you know if you don't want to do it I'll go down the road but at least you're still getting a piece of the pie and um <laughs> They they went for it. Oh wow! So we had a couple of couple of competitors that that um, helped us out. It was simple as that, mate. It just sort of progressed, progressed. Um, you know, bought and sold cars and car parts all the time. Tim and I split up. Unfortunately, yeah. I was out on my own. I remember my dad saying to me, "Mate, this is not for you. Mm. You sure you want to do this? Like, you know, Tim was the labour. Without without him, how are you going to do the job? Mm. You know, I was the short stubby guy. Yeah, I was the, I was I was the hustler, but I wasn't the guy to get my hands dirty. Yeah, yeah. And I did it, mate. I did it wow. for about three years. I worked every single day in a truck. Yeah. Um, we didn't have a forklift for a while, so everything was, you know, manhandled. Um, then these competitors started charging me for their signs because we'd, we'd, we'd take the signs off and not, not bring them back just because you know, they're old. Mm-hmm. So then before we went to site, we'd have to, have to pull the panels all apart, take their signs off neatly, put our signs on because people thought that we're stealing fences. Because we'd go there with other people's fencing, take their signs off, put our signs on. Mm-hmm. So we double-handled, triple-handled. And um, mate, we hustled. We hustled really hard. Where did that hustle come from? Where did the, the the balls and the guts to just like, you know what? I'm starting this, and I've never done it before. We don't have stock. Like, where did that come from? Like that that drive, mate. I think it was natural. Yeah. You know, my dad was a was entrepreneur. Um, you know, dad was a little bit different. Yeah, he sort of got to that two to five staff and sort of said, oh, it's a bit too much because he's a bit of a control freak. I don't know. I think I was just born that way. I had some people around me that were, you know, always telling me stories. You know, if I was 15, I was hanging out with people that were 20 or 30 and mm. felt normal. Yeah, and yeah. I wanted to prove myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I just had it in me, mm. you know. I think I was buying and selling guitars and remote control cars. Yeah, you just always had the phones hustle mindset. In, in year seven, year eight, yeah. just naturally. Yeah, so, yeah. I, you know, I think you can't learn that. I think you're born that way. Mm. So, um, mate, it just it just it just progressed from there. Wow. Um, yeah. So the the journey continued. You know, bought property. Yeah. Um, bought property at a good time. Yeah. So got equity in the properties. Yeah. Then bought stock. Yeah. Um, temporary fencing is a non serialized asset. Yeah. So you can't get finance for that. Yep. So yep. that was hard. So yep. I continued to buy and sell cars and car parts and mm. trailers, trucks, boats, whatever I could to use that profit to buy stock. Mm. Uh, which then I bought property. Mm. Uh, more equity came in property as, as as the times went on and it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. After that, what you know, what goes hand in hand with the temporary fence panel? A portable toilet. Mm. You know, do you want fries with that? The old yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so got another partner, Anthony involved in at the time, good mate of mine. And yeah, we um, worked together for six, seven years before I bought him out. And yeah, it just I just had that thing in me that I had to take over. Mm. Um, and I was, I was I still do. Mm. Yeah, so now we do temporary fencing hire, uh, which has crowd control barriers and things like that, portable toilet hire, uh, which has a big liquid waste arm, and Class A t- timber hoardings. And we, we service, uh, you know, north coast to south coast over, over five branches. Mm. Wow. Um, that was 15. This, 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 is, this is 15 years. Wow. So I started in 08. That shower, how many times I've heard, you know, an ID spark in the shower, next the shower. thing you know, it all turns into a... An empire, which is what you built today, man. So well done. Yeah, thank you, mate. But yeah, it all um, it all started from dad, mate. You know, mm. started from him with that idea, just you know, yeah. at uh, Melbourne Central, and um, yeah, one thing leads to another, mate. The, like the idea is great. You know, having an idea is is something, right? But executing it is the is the next thing, right? For you to do something and have that just that hustle mindset, just to say, I've never done this before. I know this is a good opportunity because my dad's been in the industry. And just taking it with both hands and just executing it, that's the most impressive thing to me, to be honest. It, just for the audience, like, what's the role of temporary fencing and hoarding? Like, why is it so important? Why was it such a niche market back then? And in terms of 
like the actual processing like the is there is there much that goes into it or is it just literally like construction site they need temp fencing very easy to install it's just about having the boys having the stock and having the processes in place in order to implement or is there certain skills that certain people need in order to be a successful temporary fencer it's a hard question to answer because mm. depending on who you want to be within that industry mm. um there's guys out there like i acquired a business off a guy about six weeks ago um great business mm. one man show um done his own allocating still drove the truck done his own repairs um you know wife done invoices on the weekends great size business but that that's sort of where it stopped um you know done some school work does a bit of um home company work things like that um so i guess depending on who, where you want to be in the market anything is possible um i think the hard part is is starting from scratch mm. because you've got a two three year payback period to pay off your your fencing or your toilets or whatnot so depending on, on where you want to sit in the market would depend on how i answer that question mm. um for myself i want to take over i want to be doing uh, i want to be servicing clients you know from from a tier one um from tier one back down to mum and dad's so being iso certified was was big for us mm. um but yeah i think i think any good business needs to have good processes needs to have good training you know i've got clients that that will call up i need to, I, need to, I need a fence at our site you can send anybody there that put up a fence mm. then i've got home companies where mate they are super specific gate must go here stay you know 600 off the boundary etc etc mm. so different clients different processes and where you want to sit in the market you know i think uh defines exactly who you need what you need and mm. how you um and you know how that's executed mate it's been amazing to be a part of your journey i remember when we when i first did your first car loan back when i was at lenfin yep and driving around i saw a couple of fences itfi i'm like wow like i did his car loan <laughs> and i can see his fences right but as the years went on what i found was it was so normal to see it like it just became second nature like itf hire was everywhere you'll be driving and you'll see fencing it's itf you know you'll see your trucks on the road and it, it's been an amazing journey and what i wanted to talk about it's it's got such a very big brand and reputable brand at the moment where everyone knows what it is everyone sees it and they know you as big fish how did you go through that process of taking on a job you know what was your first job a nab yeah, you got referred by... It was a, a hoarding for a nab bag at Foster. Yeah. So how did you go from that losing money to now you're working with T1 companies? You want to give us examples of type of customers you're working with now? Oh, mate. We we service, you know, your FDCs, your Taylor Groups, mm. um, you know, City Harbour Foreshore, um, some of the biggest home companies, uh, you know, Lily Homes, Ada, Ada Bray Homes, <laughs> McDonald Jones Homes, uh we do big events for new year's eve yeah. um, nice widespread we do we do all that like we do hoardings for oh mate you know i think we've done almost 100 hoardings on sydney harbour foreshore uh mate it's you know kennards we do, we do a lot of a lot of liquid waste for kennards mm. uh bad max movie we had a massive contract for there doing all their, all their toilets and liquid waste to your bubba dads mm. to your you know to your lebo builders that still do three jobs a year mm. the whole idea is that we service from a to z yeah, well, the reason why I'm asking is because we have a lot of, you know, customers and a lot of the audience are in construction and they're, they're just starting out. So they're, yep. they're sort of in that period where they're in that, that, that growing phase where they've won a couple of jobs, they're enjoying the process, they're starting to make a bit yep. of money and they want to go to that next stage where they're winning bigger clientele. Can you share with us how, like, what was your mindset and what was your strategy in terms of acquiring new customers? Like you went from doing small jobs and then eventually doing large projects and dealing with like T1 and T2 companies. Yep. Sometimes you, you have to say, fuck it. Yeah. And I said, fuck it a lot mm. um, with no strategy. Mm. I just had to have it. Yeah. And I knew I'd make it work. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's probably my number one reason of taking over. And is that you just got to put it, you got to, some jobs you win, some, do, some, some jobs you lose, but it's all in one pot. Mm. Look at the financials at the end of the month. You're positive, go harder. Yeah, go harder. Um, and before you know it, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you're hungry, you're not going to lose. Mm. If I'm going to work on a Sunday and drive a truck, or work on a Sunday and not drive a truck. Mm. Um, it doesn't bother me. We're always going to make it work. Mm. 
And in terms of like, were you cold calling? Were you just word of mouth? Like, where was the the branches? Like, I know with our business, you know, we 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 have different revenue channels. So for us, we have the online space, so everything yep. coming through social media. We've got affiliates, so referral partners such as accountants, yep. mortgage brokers, dealerships, and then we've got our organic business. Would you say the key to your success was? hustling harder, doing a good job and word of mouth referrals. Cause I feel like that's something that happens organically in, in your sort of space. You do a good job by somebody, they're happy. They'll tell their other builder friend and it's sort of just a domino effect. You continue yep. doing that good job. It's going to, you know, be a domino effect. Was that key or did you spend a lot on online advertisement? Like what did you do in, in those situations when you're in that massive growing phase? Um, I ran them parallel. So word of mouth was big, but we spent big money on Google ads. Really? Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, I think it's very competitive. At the end of the day, you're not fast. We, we get a fence or a toilet problem. Mm. A fence is a fence. A toilet's a toilet. Yeah. As long as the fence stands up and it doesn't blow over, you, you don't care, right? Mm -hmm. As long as the toilet gets serviced on time, it doesn't smell or, you know, as long as that's sorted, you're happy. So for us, it was all about beating competitors' rates. Mm. Okay. Um, being the cheapest. Like, being the cheapest to get yeah. a name out there. We yeah. did that and we still do that. Um, not as much, but um, I think the first sort of six to eight years was just being com super, super competitive. Mm -hmm. I had guys driving around to, to to competitive sites, the usual, mate, the old school methods. In a day, it's not – if you're on time, the fence is good, the toilet's good, people don't care. Price is right. Price Everyone, is right, move forward. Everyone's happy. Um, yeah. So we, we pushed hard with that. Mm. Um, and obviously acquisitions on top of that. that you know, yeah, we'll touch on that later because that's been – that's been fun. Yeah, um, that's been yeah, fun. In, I think if you, it's 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 very hard to start. De depending on what age you're at, it's very hard to start. Mm. Like, could I have started ITF uh, five years ago? Had the same journey? Probably not. Mm. You know, I've got kids. I've got a wife. I've got you know. I've got to put food on the table. When I started at not nineteen, I could I could live a you know twenty fifty bucks a week. Mm -hmm. So I guess depending on what industry you're in, it would determine your strategy around that. hundred percent. Like you've got a lot of guys that have, you know, been apprentice work. I know they're two different things sort of, but yep. similar in construction, you know, they've been an apprentice. They've, they've taken that leap, leap of faith to start their own business. They've won a few jobs and they want to scale. They want to take it to that next step. I want to touch on your, your Google advertisement, yep. right? Yep. When it first started, did you engage a marketing agency? I first started, it was quite funny because I found the paperwork the other day by old file. We started with yellow pages. Wow. Online. Okay. And I hustled the guy to do a good deal for us and whatnot, get a big page and, 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 and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, we were spending in the beginning, we we're probably spending about three grand a month just on Google AdWords. Yeah. And we we're pushing, pushing, pushing. And in the early stages, were you making more, like, were you positive cash flow at that point? Like spending 3,000, but you were making 5,000, 6,000. Mate, couldn't tell you. Yeah. Couldn't tell you. You just, yeah. The it, software wasn't that good back then. Yeah. Again, I said, fuck it. That's it. You just want to get your name out there. I just said, fuck it. I didn't really care. As much exposure as possible. Yeah. I knew I'd make it work. Yeah. I knew if I ran, if I ran out of a loss for two or three years, mm. I'd buy and sell a car over here. I'll, I'll do a deal over here. Mm. So to be honest, I didn't really care. I just knew I had to be number one. So your strategy was capture as much market share as possible. And at the end of the, like if over the long term, if you're going to continue doing that, you could make tweak to expenses. You can sell a few things to be profitable. It was long term. Yeah, it was always long term, -term play. Epic yeah. was long term. Yeah, yeah. So it was. It wasn't like let's spend three grand today to make five grand tomorrow. Yeah, rental doesn't work that way, mm. unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's quite different. If, if you know, uh, a carpenter would want to get a job out of that and make five or ten grand. Mm. Um, for us, it was. It was for, well, for me. It was. I don't care. I just have to see ITF everywhere, and I have to be number one. Well, mate, you've done a good job because <laughs> I'm sure everyone can have seen your brand before and it's starting to grow more. And um, a, a big part of that has been these acquisitions. Correct. Over the last two or three years, you've just been buying out your competitors and then just capturing more market share, more market share. That's right. How, where did that all stem from? Like, how did you know, okay, that's the that's a good strategy in order to grow to that next step? Like, how did you know about it? Did, was it from a mentor or was it just something that, you you know, you, you just tried out and it worked out and then you just said, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna continue this momentum? Um, I think firstly, because I was so hungry, it was natural. I want speed to market. Yeah. What's, what's, what's the best way to grow? Yeah. <laughs> Acquire competitors, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but bingo industries, hmm. you know. I'm a big fan of bingo. I think we spoke about this a while ago too. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's all they did. Mm. Um, they just acquired, acquired, acquired. And I remember they had like a bit of a production line where 
you know, a company would go into the start trucks and bins and then it'd come out the other end and it'd be orange with bingo and the trucks would be orange. And yeah, it's yeah. Like, Wow. Well, wow, yeah. Um, so that was like the motivate, like motivator. That was the biggest motivating. Yeah. And, and at the same time, it was good because when you acquire competitors, even though it's the same products and the mm. same sort of business, it's very different. Mm. Their clients like things done this way, but our system of software does it this way. And I was, and I was always it was an adjustment. Yeah. I was always stressing about how the hell do we do that? Like mm. it's like you need a team on that company, a team on our company, and then we have to somehow merge that. And mm. it's like, but. The idea of acquiring was if they've got two GMs, when they need they need one GM, so you save a hundred grand. Mm. That's not that's not the case mm. because that GM ran that team that way with that software. Mm. You just can't merge it. Mm. it. Doesn't work. And their certain customers are accustomed to the way they do things. Hundred percent. We do things a bit differently. So that's right. What about adjustment? Yeah. If we've got a rental extension, we charge prior to the rental extension. Some of my com- some of my competitors or people that we've that we've companies that we've acquired. They'll charge at the end of the month. Hmm. Like just little things like that that hmm. are game changers yeah, yeah. where our software wouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our, our company's built on our software. Um, then I sat down with some guys at Bingo after they, uh, after, after they moved on. They said, Lewis, we still ran software, um, still ran four different softwares parallel. Hmm. Like even when they listed, they still really? had wow. so four softwares running parallel. That's interesting. Um, so that, that sort of puts some more faith back into what I was doing. Um, but it, I don't know, mate. It's it's all about speed to market for me, mm. and acqu- with 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 acquisitions, I enjoy the story. I enjoy mm. the journey. There's no school of hire. There's mm. no school of fencing. There's no school of toilet. So mm. to meet some, you know, to meet a bloke and his wife or it, 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 their team that have been doing it for 15, 20 years, I really enjoy that story yeah, yeah. and learning from that story. Hundred percent. And it's not about putting their. Uh, their logo on the, on the wall with a big tick and say, we took over. Mm. I'm more interested in what could I learn from these people and 100%. how can I still even co-partner with, with these people? Yeah, yeah. Because it's their baby too. Yeah. Um, but it's hard, mate, because I'm very I'm very anal. Mm. I want our panels to be the same size panel. I want mm. the blocks to be the same size block. Mm. But when you acquire these competitors, everyone has different stock, yeah, yeah, yeah. different toilets, different trucks. So that's very hard for me. And I think Bingo had the same problem. Mm. They had different bins that would only work with certain trucks and – it's a pain in the ass. Then you listen to Ian Malouf from um, from Dial Dump that got acquired by or apparently merged with Bingo. Mm. He was he, he was totally different. He was just about growing his business. Same bin, same truck, perfect, sexy. But in the day, he merged with Bingo. Mm. Like yeah, yeah. So for me, it sort of put a bit more faith in, into my into my s- strategy that buy it, he could buy out. Make sure they're good. They're good deals. Uh, make sure that uh, the ex owner is still on our team mm. and grow, 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 grow. So you, were, so when you were approaching these companies and buying them out, you put together like an earn out agreement. So the the owner of that business has to work within the business over a certain period of time, and then that sounds perfect in theory, Louis. Yeah, never happened. Never happened. Never yeah. happened. No. So w- what would happen? It would start and then they would just phase out. Yeah. So we try and have <laughs> them on board for three months. Mm. Um, some blokes don't want to borrow it. Mm. They they hate me. They hate our company. They just, but they just want out. So you got to you got to work with them on that. Yeah. Um. You know we're all got different values, so not everyone's aligned. Mm. Um. And then we have got people that are still been with us from from day one since uh, the day of acquisition. Yeah, they're still right. with you. Yeah. yeah. But there's never been like a uh, an acquisition where we we haven't paid up front full in mm. in, in full. Like yeah. Okay. Everything's paid up front. Yeah. Deal gets taken on. If they stay with us, they stay with us. They stay with and, you. And uh, sometimes yeah. you get screwed. Sometimes you don't. Mm. But again, put it on the pot. And will work itself out. Yeah, perfect. If you're hungry, mate, and you're passionate, yeah, no one's gonna beat you. Yeah, especially in this modern day, I feel like that drive and that that hustle, it's very hard to find. You know, a lot of a lot of people are afraid to take risks. You've taken on so much more risk. You know, like you just said, you all these acquisitions, it's all risk. You know, it's all different softwares, all different processes. But just having that fuck it mindset, knowing that you're gonna run into issues, but being able to mitigate it and come on top is the reason why you're continuing to grow. So that's awesome. And having a teammate. Yeah. You know, I've got some really good people that Very that, important. that, that support yeah. me. And um, I always consult them before I go do a deal because mm. in the past I, I wouldn't. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know that old wog mentality. You yeah. know, it's my company, it's my business. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm employing you and if we do this, we're going to do that. That, that. That's that's gone, mate. Yeah. Them days are gone. You're no, only as good as your team. 
you got to hire people that have strengths that you don't have. I think that's definitely very important. Like you can't do everything yourself. And you know, it is a saying you hire people and get them to tell you what to do rather than you tell them what to do. And have you been doing that lately? Like most, most definitely. Yeah, yeah. But that's, that's theory, right? Yeah. You got to, that, that needs to be, you know, hard is to find somebody to trust mm. and let them sit in front of you and you go, Oh, that's, that's great. Mm. You know, I've just built this business for, 15 plus years you just hire somebody on x amount of money and try and give you advice are they going to be there in three months six mm. months 12 months yeah so i think it's very important on who you listen to and who you share good news with mm. yeah, that's that's massive for me mm. uh, because i've been caught out multiple times mm. so i think that's probably one of the best advice i can give to anybody out there listening mm. is be careful who you share good news with mm. yeah uh, because that could make or break you yeah yeah, yeah. you got to keep your circle small at times it's very important, mate. Yeah, Especially, yeah. you know, you call it a large fish and you see ITF everywhere. Mm. There's vultures everywhere, mate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's not all rosy. Yeah, I can imagine. So how many staff do you have now? Um, so we hover between 50 to 60. Wow. Yeah, and that's all in-house. That's crazy. So no um, no contractors. Yeah. Um, all the trucks are all in-house. Mm. Um, five branches. You mentioned trucks. Let's talk about a bit about the fleet. So yeah. how, many, how many cars do you have at the moment? Um, I think... We did our list about four weeks ago and we've got 80, 80 odd pieces of equipment that mm. have wheels Okay, that, that are like registered. Wow. Out of that 80 odd, you'd probably have 40 to 45 trucks mm -hmm. from car license to yep. HR. Yep. Um, you got company cars, trailers, forklifts, utes, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. So I've obviously, when I started working with you, what was that, probably seven years ago? Yeah, seven years ago, we probably would have had, seven years ago, we would have had probably six six trucks mm. so that that growth has been and i've been absolutely um, like i love the fact that i've been involved in that journey up to a certain point and i just wanted to tell the audience about asset finance like yep you know there's different types of brokers out there so some of them mm. playing in the mortgage space and you know you mentioned that you've been buying property some of them dealing in that property in that commercial space yep how important, because like for a business like you, you need trucks on the road. Yep. You need cars on the road. How important for you was it dealing with an asset finance broker that was a specialist in that field? Um, and be completely honest. Yeah, <laughs> of course, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. In terms of that that growing phase, like, you know, I remember dealing with you. It was that same sort of thing. You, time was everything. You yep. needed it done. Hurry you needed it done quickly and yep. you needed it done cheap. Yep. So very similar to how you've built your business. You're, you're, you're cost effective, you're quick and you're efficient. Yep. How important was it working? Because it, it, it's a big decision, you know, purchasing your first truck, purchasing your second truck, your third truck. How important was it for you working with a specialist and a, and a specialized asset finance broker? Mate, I think it was everything. Yeah. Because if I needed it, I needed it mm. now, yeah. not, not, not tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I think the first ones we did with you guys were probably the the Fuzos. Mm. Uh, they were our first brand new truck. Mm. And I bought Fuso because I had five year warranty. Yeah, yeah. Um, so at that time, it was a big step. Mm. It was scary. Mm. Uh, you know, spending $55,000 on a truck, mm. like shit, I never did that myself. Yeah, I, yeah. I always drove a, you know, a second hand six to 10 grand shitbox. Mm. And um, you know, to buy a brand new truck, take that commitment and give it to a driver that you know, <laughs> I was a bit iffy on, yeah, and I yeah. never had it myself. Mm. It was a big step. Mm. I think it was so important to have, to have that support. Mm. Uh, to have someone like yourself to give us the breakdown back then I do nothing about finance mm. um, you know what other what other repayments what other interest rates how to how to separate the interest rate to the repayment because mm. of all the extra fees and, and things like that of course you taught me that yeah but I think I think it's just another crucial tool within mm. your business to have that support just like your staff mm. you've got internal stakeholders ex external stakeholders mm. for us that is as important Mm. Um, so yeah, you definitely need to have a uh, a good broker on board that that will support you, not bullshit to you, but not rip you off. Yeah, hundred no, percent. Um, and I think you put the trucks aside. Even we did some temporary fence deals. Yes, um, yeah. they were like game changers. Mm. You know, we bought a heap of stock from a from an auction, and um, without that, we'll, <laughs> we we're going to struggle. I think it was about one hundred and seventy grand back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. Where, where the hell would I found one hundred and seventy grand? Yeah, and we did it. It was a it was a huge interest rate. But you know what? Again, fuck it. We made it work. <laughs> yeah, you made it work. When you when you when you went and purchased your first truck, like yep. just for the audience, when was the light bulb moment when you're like, I need to buy a brand new truck? Yep. And it was like you said, it was a big jump. 
to make that decision to purchase a brand new truck. Yep. And obviously it's an it's an ongoing cost and it's an expensive cost in the, in the early stages of business. Were you did you do some numbers in terms of okay, this truck is going to get me x amount of money, the repayment is going to be this, so yep. it makes sense to do mm -hmm. go ahead with it and did you continue that approach as your fleet started to grow? Um, or did you do anything differently when it came to purchasing more in the later stages? Real, that's a real easy one for me. Mm. So we're running around replicating what Coates and Kenars did. We had a big truck on the road uh, that was servicing toilets and transporting toilets. So it's one truck, one pump, one crane. Mm. Again, in theory, it makes perfect sense. So one truck can transport and pump. And then I started looking at the uh, repair costs and the fuel bill. So we put um, GPSs in trucks, which gave you a report. You did 800 Ks this month. Mm. Great. How much did it cost me to do 800 Ks? Shit. It cost me a thousand bucks. Wow. Plus the repairs was this. So I came up with the idea back then and I'm almost certain we're probably one of the first, probably not the first, but one of the first um, to separate transport trucks from service trucks. And it was very hard to find staff to be able to, to, to have a truck license, to be able to use a crane and to pump a toilet. Yeah. I said, no, nah, we're going to change it. I've got to change it. I need to get a truck. I need a five-year lease and I need to have a truck with five-year warranty so then my repairs are sorted. Yes. Um, I want automatic gearboxes because I'm sick and tired of burning out clutches mm. and I want car licence so then I have to get anyone with a truck licence. Yes. So then we then we spoke to Foos at the time and we had tanks engineered to car licence trucks. Wow. Once I knew that was available, I then I um, I pulled out my old uh, NAB calculator, the finance calculator, did, did my own sort of Numbers, sort of yeah. numbers there because that was not that was nice and quick and thought shit the fuel saving will cover the repayments I'm like no nah, that can't be right and I remember sitting down with this off Louis is this right run, 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 I ran some numbers past you <laughs> and um, it was right so we bought uh, we bought two brand new trucks mm. 110 grand for two 55 k each and I'm going from a five to ten grand ship box yeah yeah and it was the best decision ever made the only yeah. part that pissed me off was I wanted in car you know the uh, in car nav. Mm. And um, the boys were doing twenty to twenty five jobs a day, and uh, I don't know if I told you the story. And it was it, it was taking a minute to a minute thirty to enter in the addresses wow. into the yeah. in car entertainment yeah, to yeah. go to the next job. Yeah, yeah. And you're doing twenty five jobs. It's like an hour. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> we're in Sydney. It yeah, takes yeah. an hour to get from 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 the depot to your first job, mm. then an hour to get back from your last job to depot. That's two hours. So you're paying a guy eight hours, but he's really doing six hours worth of work. Mm. Now I'm paying him an hour to do entering. entering. <laughs> like, what the hell's got berserk? Yeah, yeah. Um, so then we got then we got software and stuff. So now everything's preloaded, start, go, start, go. Yeah. So, you know, I fixed that problem. And um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much how it started from just getting a GPS in the truck, noticing that the fuel bill was, was, was crazy. Um, again, we could help with uh, recruitment and things like that by having car licenses, trucks, save on repairs, and yeah, I haven't looked back since. Yeah, I do. I do tell a bit of a lie. You know, if a truck is worth about two hundred grand new, then we can and we can buy something pretty good for yeah. eighty to one hundred. Yeah. Well, then I will go down that path. Yeah. But if I'm talking car license trucks, um, sixty odd grand, I will never. I'll always buy. Um, if, if I get the chance, I'll always buy new. Yeah. But. It's hard now. There's so many trucks. Yeah, and I want them right. all new. Yeah. I can't just go and replace them all. Yeah. So it's sort of we do one every quarter. Yeah. I love how you put to put aside your emotion and you let your numbers do the talking. 100%. I think that's very important in business. Putting aside the emotion and you saw what the issues were. You put pen to paper. You got out your nap calculator. You did the numbers and then you said, okay, this is feasible. And we're having these conversations all the time with the customers. They'll be like, oh, that's that's pretty expensive. I'm like, well, have you done your numbers? Yeah. Because the last thing we want to do as a brokerage business is put people in a in a worse position. We want to buy, help them but purchase an income generating asset to help them grow and scale so they can go on to the next one. And when they come back and say to me, that's expensive. And I'm like, okay, what are the numbers that you've come up with? And they come back and say, what do you mean the numbers? I'm like, well, you're, you're making a big decision here. You're purchasing a $100,000 truck for your business. You should have done some numbers to make sure this is going to be feasible. Like that's how right. much money is this going to be making you? How much are you going to be spending on fuel? And it's so important that you've done that. And and it's been able you've been able to go and buy, buy more and more. And it's become so good for your business. I want to talk about, um, so you mentioned now, like you prefer to purchase brand new supply chain. Obviously that's been a big 
big issue in Australia at the moment, especially yeah. after COVID. How did, did that affect you guys? Because yes. you had that mindset of, you know, always purchasing brand new. Um, you've got the warranty there and all that, all that sort of stuff. And, you know, you did say that you look at purchasing used equipment. Is that because of supp supply chain being an issue or is it mainly the price differences? Um, again, depending what the truck is being used for. Mm. So if we've got a car license truck that's servicing toilets, mate, they're out five days a week. The trucks are on for nine hours a day. I have to buy new. Mm. But I can't get new. I don't buy Fuzas anymore. Um, the auto gearboxes are rubbish. So I buy Hino because Hino went to five years warranty. Yep. So that's a good tip for anybody out there trying to buy a truck, buy a Hino. But they can't keep up with our growth. Mm. So then we have to look at secondhand deals. And we look for a good secondhand deal. We don't really finance them anymore. Mm. What can I say? Mm. It's... Um, I think it's, there's a there's a there's a massive supply issue at the moment in in, in Australia. Mm. If you're smart and you're a hustler, look look for other avenues. But I've always got um, allocations in place for certain trucks over the next six six to eighteen months. Yeah, yeah. And in terms of your due diligence, finding an asset, what was your process from A to Z? Like, you need a truck. What's the first thing you do? New or used? New and used. Give us new first. New, depending again. On what it's used for, yep. I'll only buy Hino. Yep. So I've got three different contacts. So you approach Hino directly. You've got yep. contacts there. Yep. They sorted it out yep. for you. Yeah. Need X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Did it yesterday. Yeah. Lewis going to wait three months. Yep. I can't wait three months. Yeah, yeah. From there, right? Yeah. And that's why I started putting. I put some allocations in over over the next sort of six to eighteen months. Yeah. Um. So yeah, depending on what the truck is used for, number one, does it have to be new or can we go used? Hmm. If it's a truck that may be a second truck that may be used three days a week, we might we might look at a used option. Hmm. If it's used, we pretty much jump straight onto truck sales, um, or we go on to Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. That's so you would physically go jump on truck sales. You've got the app. Yeah, I'm passionate. Yeah. So at night, you know, the kids go to bed. Mrs. Watching, uh, you know, some wives TV show. show. <laughs> um, so I start hustling. Yeah, I you got the laptop. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I sort of just last no, on the phone. I'm on in bed with her just to keep yeah. her happy. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and um, I sort of just naturally got this, you know, this, uh, you know, this A to Z of what I do from cars, boats, uh, and, you know, trucks, stock, businesses, et cetera, mm. et cetera. Mm. So I'll just run through that and mm. so do the guys at work. Mm. But I sort of, I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. So mm. I'm, I, I normally beat them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm at 10 o'clock and I'm sending them things and the next day they're sort of, you know, investigate it. Yeah, go yeah. check it out. Yeah, yeah. You know, if it's north or south, I'll go for a bit of a drive myself. Yeah. You know, just get out of the office. No, 100%. Um, but yeah. You know, any any chance, even through um, auctions as well. Auctions, yeah. might, might look at certain auctions. Uh, but, you know, if I can buy a tank from somewhere, I'll buy a tank because it's mm. hard to get tanks when I want them. Mm. So, yeah, I do. I, I probably have four to six spare trucks mm. because you've got that high tide and low tide. You've got, mm. you know, you've got event season and things like that where everything is all out and you still mm. need more. And you've got to ride the wave. And it still makes sense to have them rather than renting them if you need them, right? I don't, I don't like to rent. Yeah. I'm in the rental game. Yeah, in the rental <laughs> game. <laughs> yeah, like the rent. oh, I like going and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I guess, you know, and just just to go back, you know, I think it, it comes down to who you are in business. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I love business. Mm. I'm not just passionate about fencing and toilets mm. and liquid waste. Like, that's yeah. all well and great. Yeah. But if you're in business and you don't know if you need to buy a new truck or not, respectfully why the hell are you in business yeah yeah, yeah. you know like if you're relying on external stakeholders mm. to give you advice mm. oh, i don't know i don't yeah. know I, yeah. I think to myself you might be the best chippy in the world but yeah. maybe you, you might be better off working for the other the other best chippy that's got 50 staff and yeah. earning a, a, a cracker wage on a good package yeah. because if you're in business you kind of need to know a lot about business 100%. you know from yeah. accounts to hr to you know the, the whole package so mm. i find it a bit scary that people would come to buy a truck for 100k and not do the numbers yet but i guess that's why you have a broker yeah yeah don't yeah. get me wrong no 100 percent. but you know that should be coming to you going hey louis just look over my numbers yeah, yeah. make sure i haven't missed out anything because yeah, yeah. you're because you're the professional mm. um is it is it is it a go or not you yeah. know and talk to their account if they have to get a couple of boxes ticked but if they're waiting for somebody to do their numbers shouldn't be a business mm. no 100 percent we get a lot of those clients, right? And we help them through that process. So they're looking at purchasing not just a truck, but a business itself. Yeah. We've been doing a lot of um, awesome. co uh, cement mixer trucks, right? Oh, yeah. So they'll yeah. have like a Metro mix contract yeah, yeah, or yeah. a wholesome contract. Nice. And they're looking at purchasing the whole business itself. So part of that business is the, the truck. And then there's that goodwill portion. And we sit with their accountant. We work together the cash flow. We say these are the numbers. A lot of the times it's brand new ventures, so the yep. rates are slightly higher yep. than, say, for instance, you were coming to me to purchase a truck. Yep. 
But no, that's the fun part of our business is, yeah. is, is understanding the business that they're acquiring and going through the expenses and seeing, okay, what is the bottom line going to look like at the end of each month? Yep. And are you happy with that? Yep. And then a lot of the times I'll be like, you know, if it is a good contract, they're like, yes, I'm very happy with that. And then that take sense. it from there. Um, in terms of numbers, I want to touch on that. So yeah. I know like your approach has been get as much as possible, market yeah. share, market share, market share. Mm-hmm. But you were still like, you can't get to this point without being fairly wise in, in certain areas. Like, did you ever use your accounting software or how did you do your numbers to say, okay, I'm good, you know, I'm positive at the end of the month in order to purchase that next truck. Like you mentioned before, you're doing the numbers. Are you doing that now? And were you doing that in the early and mid stages or you just took on as much as possible and you knew it was going to be okay. Early mid stages, there wasn't much money around. So it's yeah. quite easy to yeah. work out, should I buy a new truck or shouldn't I? Yeah, yeah. Um, now it's all about reporting. Mm. You know, it's all about software. It's all about reports, you, you know, utilisation, your P&Ls. Mm. Um, I think we're at that stage now where it's big enough to quite easily make a decision. If yeah. you need it yeah. and it's going to be used every day, mm. you haven't got a choice, you mm. haven't got a choice. Mm. Um, if you need that asset, you need it. Mm. If you can't make it work, you shouldn't be in business. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in the early days, it was it was pretty much the you know the fuck it mentality and do the sign the cross and I'll, I'll make it work. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> I love and, that. And you know, it's it's okay to fail. Mm. You know, if 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 you're a true hustler, it's okay for your main business to fail in that growing stages as long as you've got a, something running parallel. Mm. Like you know, because some businesses. It's not you can't just make money overnight. Mm. It may need that investment, and if you haven't got anything to back you up, who's, who's going to give you money? Yeah, yeah. So I think you know that was my strategy: is have two things running, running parallel, buying, mm. selling cars, trucks, utes, mm. trailers, whatever. Over here, forklifts. You know, like even if I needed them, I'd buy them. And but I would if someone if someone would come to buy and I could make a couple of grand profit, I'd sell it. Mm. They wouldn't have a forklift for a week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, you know that two grand help help you know pay X Y Z. Hundred um, percent. But yeah, now now it's all. No, it's all it's all it's all strategy. Mm. Um, yeah, there's software for software. Yeah, I remember numbers, I walk, numbers, numbers. I walked into your office once, and there was just this massive whiteboard of all your fleet, how much you're paying on Redjo, the yeah, registration, yeah, this, yeah. And, and I found that amazing. You know, like a lot of people should be doing those things when they're making those big decisions to purchase assets, because you know it is a big commitment. You know, the whiteboard should be your best friend. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, end of day, if you need a truck to do a job. Well, it should be that simple, mm. you know. Should I go new because it comes with warranty? You know, the repayments are X, or mm. should, I, should I spend ten grand on a ship box and 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 pray to God it doesn't break down? Like, mm. you know, I think it's quite simple. If you're talking one or two trucks, it should be very, very simple. Mm. What do you know about electric trucks? Have you done some research on those? I, I think they're still too new. Yeah, um, I'm not a risk taker when it comes to you know equipment that could or could not work. Yeah. you know, I mm. like I just like a good old proven truck. Mm. Um, Am I excited about it? Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not <laughs> going to be a guinea pig. Yeah. You know. You're not going to be the first to. No. Nah. No. Okay. That's I'll be the first to take over in a short amount of, a short <laughs> amount of time. If it's working, I'm going to buy you. <laughs> I'll let somebody else yeah. trial that. Yeah, and yeah. Um, if it works and it makes sense, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Why not? Why yeah. not? You know, I think our fuel bill now is about 35K a month. Yeah. Wow. So um, it's not it's not fun paying that every month. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you. But yeah, would I consider well, it? Yeah, most yeah, definitely. Definitely. Most yeah. definitely. I think you, yeah, it's stupid not to because most definitely, yeah. If especially with a fleet like that, it's a big cost for sure, you know, and that that cost can go straight to the bottom line or purchase more temp fencing. Purchase more that efficiency, more yeah. So, we want to touch on what you said before about the temp fencing, how we helped you with finance. Yes, you mentioned the rate was expensive, but you still took it. Yes, right. Um, you understood that the temp fencing was higher risk, but however, you did your numbers and it was going to work out. Yep. How has that changed now? Because right now you've, you're 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 acquiring new businesses. So part of that business is the goodwill. So you've got their customers, but a lot of it's their equipment, right? Yep. Is that is that how it is at the moment? Correct. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to touch on as well, we see a lot. You know, a lot of our customers are in construction, and they're in transport, they're in rentals and whatnot. We've been seeing that you know they're struggling in terms of getting payments from certain people. Okay. Did you ever go through that? that that period where you would do a couple of jobs for someone and then you know they're sort of in the position where they're going under and they're struggling to pay you did you ever have those situations where you would do a job and then they won't pay you or they're struggling to pay or and how did you mitigate that because it's very common in the industry where you know people become so dependent on certain customers and they Mm -hmm. only work with a few and if something happens to those you know they're in a very tough spot cash flow wise yes 
you mentioned your customers before. It was a very, very large widespread, yep. which is great. You know, in terms of a business owner, you want that widespread because just in case one person goes down, you've got a, a whole wide, wide range of customers that are still paying you money. But did you ever have those situations and how did you deal with them when people were struggling to pay you? Um, in the early days, it was a lot harder mm. because a thousand bucks was was a, was a game changer. Mm. But I think we're quite lucky because a lot of our contracts for fencing and toilets are anywhere from three hundred and fifty bucks to two grand. Mm. So it's not the end of the world now, thank God. So we don't really have um, no. Obviously, our hoarding business is probably um, you know has your you know your thirties to to half a mil, mm. uh, but we. Touch wood, we really haven't had any sort of like we've had we've had hits, yeah, uh, but there haven't been hits that would that would take us down. You mm. know, a thousand bucks here, five grand there, ten grand there. I think the biggest hit we had was um, we got hacked by a Ni- <laughs> Nigerian. Oh wow, um, that wouldn't have been fun. And I think we lost about seventy five grand. Oh wow, so that was hard. To, that was hard to recoup. Yeah, um, insurance wouldn't cover it because of our IT issues at the time. Yeah. Um, so that was hard, but we don't sort of we you know we'd probably have about fifteen hundred clients in our books, mm. active clients. So yeah, and there's a lot of the time, Excuse Lewis, me. when like you do a job for for a, let's just say we'll keep it simple. You do a job for a house, that house is complete. You raise the invoice, and yep. then you'll have like fourteen day payment terms with the bill. Is that how yep. your how it currently <coughs> works at the moment? And then for the hoarding, it's probably a progress claim type of work. Yes and no. Um, I think about 50-ish percent of our business would be COD clients. Mm. I run my COD clients as if you're um, the same the same way that you would order a pizza. Mm. Um, so you should be able to jump online um, or make a phone call, um, get a quote, a book offence, lock it all in within five minutes. Mm. They, they're all credit cards taken up front. Credit cards are kept on file. So they're, they're pretty good. Um, lost and damaged stock is hard at the end of the job. Mm. But yes, with our hoarding business, um, the majority of that is is progress payment. So I mm. guess when you're looking at r- reports, things like that, you got you, you got your cash flow report, you, yeah. you, got, you, you got your you got your P&Ls. But mm. as you grow and as it gets larger and larger and larger, mm. one side comp- compensates, <laughs> compensates the other yeah, side. Yeah, no, 100%. So, um, and thank God our T's and C's are, are are pretty good. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, I don't have much of an issue in, that's in that department. Good. No, that's very good. I love that business model where, you know, you do a job and you get paid straight away. Yeah. Like it's just because we see all the time a lot of construction businesses there, you know, they've got too much exposure. out there, you know, too much exposure. Yeah. And I was just curious to know about what your situation was and how you mitigated it. But it's good that you've you've got the best of two. You know, you've got that, that constant cash flow. You know, you do a job, you get paid straight away. Good ratio. That, yeah. And then you've got the other one. That's good. Um, that's pretty much it, Lewis. Well, um, mate. Is there anything else you want to share with the, with the audience? Share. Well, I guess um, would a lot of your clients be small business? Yes. Well, I think it's small to medium, yeah. Small to medium. Mm. I, mean, I, I guess it's hard. And I think, um, I think you know, if you're touching on the bloke that we're calling you about um, buying a truck and not knowing their numbers, are they startups? No, not all the time. Yeah, okay. Mm. That scares me. Mm. Mm. That really scares me. Mm. It's not so much they've done no numbers at all, but it's just more so when they're hearing the, the repayments and they're like, wow, that's so expensive. And I'll be like, okay, what's the numbers? They'll know how much is taken in, but they haven't really crunched them in detail like how you have. Yeah, okay. So like you've broken down or just I've gone into your office and I've seen the whiteboard, you know, you've got everything itemized. You've tracked everything in order to make those decisions. And I think that's so important, you know, and that's probably the reason why you're still in that position to continue to grow. Whereas a lot of them, you know, and we have some, we also have customers as well. They take on something they probably shouldn't have because they yeah, haven't okay. done their numbers. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's just for the audience to you know sort of show that you know how it's done, why it's effective, and how you come up with that decision. And putting aside emotion and let the numbers do the talking, I think is very important, especially in asset finance as yep. well. Like purchasing fleet, you know, it's very expensive. Yeah. Besides purchasing a property, like what else are you going to be purchasing in terms of assets that that's right. a couple hundred thousand dollars? So it's a big decision. And yeah, no, I just wanted to touch on how you're doing it and yep. and how it's benefited you and how it could benefit other people. Well, yeah. I think, you know, if you are in small business, if you're a young director, make a decision. Hmm. Is that who you want to be? Are you going to put it all on the line? Um, are you are you hungry enough? Because hmm. um, I see most guys that go to all this effort, put all these hours in, and I think to myself, mate, you could be a great asset to another company mm. and you could earn more money 
with less stress, less yeah. headache, not have accountants, not have this, not have yeah. that. Amen to that, yeah. You know, and yeah. I just think to myself, guys, please, you know, work out who you are. Mm. Um, and I think that's probably the biggest thing in business is working out who you are and where you sit in the business world. Mm. If, if it's not for you, get out of it. Mm. Go hustle a deal with a great company. If you're a plumber, go talk to one of the biggest plumbing companies, sell your mm. story, let them pay you two, 250K a year. And spend more time with your wife and kids and mm. be happy. Mm. Um, because I just, it really shits me when I see uh, young business owners mm. that are doing 80 hours a week mm. and taking home 150K. Mm. Mm. So I think that's my advice is work out who you are, where you sit. Mm. And, um, you know, work-life balance is, is huge. Mm. We've only got one chance at life. Mm. So um, make the most of it, whether it's in your business or with your family. Mm. No, amen to that, man. Thanks, Lewis. God bless you. Not Lord. only have you been a long-term customer, but you've been a really good friend. And Mate. like I said before, uh, it's been a it's been a pleasure to be on this journey with you and assisting you with this growth in the business of acquiring your assets. And you're on this next level now where I don't hear from you because I'm assuming you're buying everything outright. But it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> no, it's good. No, I lo I've, I've loved seeing your success, and I hope I keep continue to keep seeing ITF on every on every friends, man. So thank you, mate. You've yeah. been a Big part of the journey. Yeah. You've helped me buy stock trucks. <laughs> yeah. You've had my back. Yeah. We've argued. We've yeah. laughed. Yeah. We've had beers. Yes, that's it. Um, that's what it's about. <laughs> mate, you've uh, you've taught me a lot. Mm. And um, you know, Likewise. I think I think if you're a young businessman and you want to acquire assets, um, competitors, trucks, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, mate, I think uh, come and see you because it's, it's 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 about the experience with yourself, and mm. that's what I like about your business and and what you do. It's not just a transaction. Mm. You're there to give advice. You're there to give them, um, you know, some stories. Mm. And um, mate, you did that for me, and and here I am. So thank you, mate. Thank you, Lewis. Appreciate it, mate. Cheers. God bless.